Hey, so this is huge, 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 uh, really exciting report for you guys, uh, talking about a rape victim, uh, how they're raped. I mean, it's, I've got some graphic stuff for you and I actually show, uh, recordings of, of, uh, hypnosis to expose the rape, uh, out and it was blocked out. The actual rapist used hypnosis to get the, uh, victim to block out that the rape even happened. Um, woman shows up to a hospital. Uh, with uh, can't remember what happened in the past hour shows up without pants without underwear has no clue what's going on totally like bewildered uh, crazy 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 story uh, you're definitely going to want to watch this this is like the epic of investigations that's going to happen and it's in Orlando Florida and I'm bringing it to you right here live as it happens watch this watch this now don't miss a beat Watch this now. You're going to love it. Help me help fight rapists. Hey, everybody. This is Jerome Robinson, the rooster, with the Robinson Report. Hey, so I can't give you details on what's going on, but I can tell you this. I'm investigating uh, uh, a rape uh, that happened uh, a couple days ago. And basically, um, I've come to realize through this investigation that there's a lot more women who actually don't know that they were raped. And this is gonna to sound totally crazy. If you've ever had a blacked out moment, whether it was through drinking or through some other means, please contact me. Uh, you can contact me. Uh, I'm not really gonna check messages and I apologize, but someone on my staff will. Uh, you can put a comment below or contact me directly at 407-808-7500. Hopefully I'll put the number below so you can contact me. Um, but it's very, very important that you understand that there is the possibility that you've been raped if you've had a blackout moment. Whether you were drunk, sober, whatever, the, what, what, whatever. If you don't remember where you parked your car or you don't remember certain things about whatever, I don't care if it was 10 years ago, five years ago, I actually have a way to get you to remember that and to recall it's in your brain, I can pull it out. I'm actually, for those that know me, I'm a certified hypnotherapist formerly certified hypnotherapist in Connecticut. Uh, I haven't practiced in, I live in the state of Florida. I haven't practiced uh, uh, and I haven't renewed my certification. I will, <laughs> I will after this, after this, I will. A lot of people have asked me to do hypnosis on them to quit smoking and to, uh, they've asked me to help them quit smoking. They've asked me to help them uh, uh, lose weight, uh, quit drinking or doing drugs. and. Unfortunately, me being selfish, it takes a lot for me to do hypnosis, so I've actually said no, or I've said yes, but actually never did it. Um, I take hypnosis very seriously, and when I do it, it's a lot of prep work, and I've just been lazy about it, but this was a rape, so I took it serious. Um, so I performed hypnosis, did not lead the patient, recorded it, and was able to uncover what they, why they didn't remember where they parked their vehicle, why they don't remember why they showed up at hospital, with no pants and no underwear. <laughs> I actually I had the person Baker acted because I thought they were crazy. Turns out the hospital said they weren't crazy and the place they got sent to said they weren't crazy. They just don't remember for whatever reason. So they got released right away within a matter of hours. I'm glad they were Baker acted and not arrested. But I'm telling you right now that... If you've ever experienced anything like this, please contact me. I will get that information out. I'm very good at what I do, and I'm gonna make it my mission to specialize in this. I'm more upset with certain aspects of the rape than even the rapist himself. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now, sorry, I have a broken arm and a broken foot. I'm on a wheelchair right now, and I'm gonna try to get the sweat out of my eyes because it's really hot out here um but i'm right now i have a police officer behind me and another police officer that we're working on the investigation uh working on the investigation right now uh so I, it's an ongoing investigation i can't discuss it with you i can tell you this that this person i want to make it my mission to bring them to justice along with other parties involved but i'm also going to teach you that more people get raped and don't even know it because hypnosis was used on her to make her block the whole thing out. I'll go over in details later on another episode. 
uh, I'll call it part two of this part one. Here's another police officer coming. This is a huge, huge investigation. And uh, uh, it's, it's, this is not going to go away. You, I, like I said, I don't care if it was 10 years ago. I don't care if statute of limitations is, is over. I don't care if it's two months ago. I don't care if it was yesterday. I don't care if there's no evidence. I can bring that to light. I will investigate on your behalf. Again, please feel free to contact me. This is not me trying to make money off of you. This is me wanting to serve justice through Jesus Christ. Listen, feel free to contact me. If you have any, any sort of blockage in your mind or have the inclination that at some point you're raped, whether it be through your childhood or your adulthood, contact me. So at what point is it that the, how do I say this right? The police are almost going to victimize you again and not believe you. So my biggest fear is those that have suffered some sort of tragic event that they really don't know what happened. Yeah, I'll bring that event to light and I'll expose the truth. But at what point can we get the police to take your situation seriously? Now, I'm not saying that the police are ingenuous on not wanting to care or help you. Not at all. And I'm not saying the law is against you, but the law is also there to protect the potential uh, 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 accuser, you know, uh, or, uh, not the accuser, sorry, the accused, um, that might be innocent. It could be a false claim. And so, uh, remember hypnosis is not typically for those that don't understand. It's not, you know, valid in court, just as like a lie detector. A lot of people don't realize it's not valid in court. So, um, it's not that it's junk science or anything of that nature. It's, it's, it's not, it's a simple therapy. Um, but a little more complex, but it's just that there's a lot of things that are not admissible in court simply because this person could be coerced. So I videotape and record uh, my sessions so that you're not going to, so it's going to show clear to the jury that no one's been coerced. In fact, I'll put in certain traps uh, to protect the accused so that the facts are the facts and nothing more. Um, when I do hypnosis, this, you know, you're not going to be you're not going to be making stuff up. It's not how it works. It's going to be the facts and only. I get into a certain part of your brain. Yeah, and uh, well. one second here. Um, all right, so I keep on putting it on pause um, because I don't want to disrespect the police. I'm not here to record them. Um, I take this, you know, very seriously. So, and I, I take the police very seriously. They're recording me which is enough through their body cam so that they can record statements, things of that nature. I don't want to make them feel comfortable as if I'm recording them. So uh, please understand why I keep on putting this on pause. It's, it's to protect that fact that they're human beings and I don't need to make their job any more difficult by recording them. Like, ah, I'm recording you and what, you know? No, dude, I just, mm, too much of that going on right now. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. So, and again, I apologize to everybody for my broken shoulder. Um, at one point, I'll just let you see it. It's got a big, huge dent where a piece of bone used to be. A piece of bone chipped off, floating in there. And of course, I got my broken foot. They said they can't cast this um, because it's in the shoulder region. But they said it's going to heal up nice. We'll see. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, so um, I, I, I take this seriously to where uh, when I record... Um, when I record, uh, I record the sessions for so that when it's shown to a jury, uh, if it makes it that far, that it's clear that you're not making this up. I do it in a very professional way to where no jury's gonna not believe you, um, and uh, and and I will push through my team to make sure it gets to a jury. Uh, I will. I will push the police. I will push the attorney general. I will make sure, and I will push their defense attorney to make sure you get your day in court because you deserve it. The, my biggest issue is not what you went through. We can't change the past, right? If that person was to never commit a rape again, we that's great. We can't change the past. I'm not here to get on. I'm not here to put that person away for the one action they did. 
I'm here to prevent other women from being hurt or men or children or anybody because by you doing nothing you basically give credence and said hey you can get away with murder you can get away with rape not okay and I don't want that to continue to happen to other people people don't realize how good they are at getting away with rape and it happens way too often you know I look back at my life and I look to myself and I'm like am I guilty and unfortunately I can think of one person that might even be able to bring a claim against me I'm putting this on camera telling you the truth that I started kissing this girl who was into me I was into her she passed out I'm still kissing her and I'm rubbing up on her not realizing she passed out she wakes up like this and says what are you doing I didn't have consent and you know I didn't realize she passed out but the point the point is I was too busy trying to get some where if I had taken it any further let's say I penetrated or did anything of that nature I would have in fact raped her and uh, I should and would be in trouble as a result I mean I'd be guilty so I need you to understand that more men are guilty of this whether we realize it or not it's not that we're intention on trying to be monsters it's not like I'm looking to put these people away it's I'm looking to make awareness and for you to bring your voice to stop them make them aware to stop them from doing it in the future whether they go to jail or not, whether you, whether we take it to that next level or not, that's your choice. But I want to stop other women, men, children, whomever from being raped because it's wrong. So please, I encourage you, stand up. Let me get to the truth of your past. And let's fight this together because it happens more often than not. I can't guesstimate that 30% of women in this country have been raped and don't realize it because I don't have those facts. But I will soon with your help. Let's get to the bottom of this. Let me help you. Again, you can call, dial this number right here. I'll make sure I put it there. Um, and, uh, and, and, and contact me. Um, I'll probably put an email, a special email designed for this. Um, if I don't put my telephone number, I'll put the email. Um, and that way, uh, I'll have someone, uh, on my unit, um, on my, you know, the Robinson report team, investigate it, get back to you and, uh, let's get this taken care of. Let's get you taken care of because this is not okay by any means. All right. Let me help you. I'm not looking for money. I work for Jesus. As corny as that sound, whether you believe in him or not, still take advantage and use me to help you because there will, you will get your justice one way, shape or form. My name is Jerome Robinson, a.k.a. The Rooster, right? <laughs> so I should tell you um, that some of the... I'm going to play for you a little bit of uh, a hypnosis session. And uh, I should tell you it's uh, a little bit graphic. So please, if you have sensitive ears, uh, please, 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 um, maybe cut this part out don't watch this part uh, this is an actual real life uh, part of uh, a very small part of real life hypnosis session so right I've already put the subject uh, into a hypnotic state uh, uh, prior to this now I'm just recording some just a, a fraction of some of the uh, testimony of what originally the person had no clue they had this huge block of memory chunk that was gone and so it uh, through this you'll be able to understand why it was gone and what the perpetrator did now I'm actually let me let me take that back I'm not gonna put what the perpetrator did in order to put this person make this person forget because I don't want anybody else to do the same thing and I think I, I don't want to give ammunition uh, or some sort of recipe for another predator to do the same thing to an individual, sorry, patients getting in and out, and then I have the police going back and forth, so that's why you hear all that stuff. So I apologize, police all around. Um, <clears throat> so I want, I don't want this to uh, 
I don't want to give a recipe for disaster for another predator to take advantage of an innocent bystander. So, um, so I probably, I'm not going to put that part on. I'm just going to put just some of the testimony. Fair enough. And so, like I said, if it's too much for you to hear, uh, press mute. Because uh, I'm not showing any faces or anything. Just press mute. And uh, it'll be a black screen. So you can watch. Uh, you'll know it's over when uh, the black screen's gone. All right? If, you know, thank you so much. And uh, here it is. But without further ado. Did someone touch you? Do you recognize the person? I don't know who they are by name, but yeah, I know their I know their face. Were they at the bar? Yeah. He grabbed you from behind, or or you walked up to him? Grab you on the shoulder. Which one? The black guy or the white guy? He was from the bar? Yeah. He was the white guy? Yeah. He grabbed you and what happened? What you say? My name is Barbara. And then what happened? He goes, well, my name is Shannon. I purposely want to block this out to protect anybody who's potentially innocent uh, from being recorded. I don't want any names involved, so this is important. La 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 Again, I'm doing some additional recording just to make sure that you understand we are protecting the identity of both the uh, accused rapist and the victim in this particular case until further notice and the investigation is complete or at least made public and or otherwise.
friends and you had sex with them. Behind a building. Huh? You went behind a building, okay? Yeah, they had like a, a street lamp. Okay. So there's a little ledge. And so I just started walking a little faster. I was getting scared. Are you wearing your pants? we're going to remember so the shortcut tell me about the shortcut did you see anybody this but we have, we have to were you wearing pants then Shoes. I don't remember. Do you know if Chad followed you or he went somewhere else? I didn't pay attention. That was another reason why I was trying to take this shortcut because I didn't want him to try to offer me a ride. Or your shoes and then what happened? I don't know. I blacked out. Do you think you stood up or you sat down? No. I, I didn't stand up. You fell over or you? Yeah, I think so. No, um, I, don't, I don't remember getting up. And then I ran and was like, 
like I fell asleep and came back mm -hmm. awake. Yeah. I knew there was something. My lip was supposed to be on the other side. Your lip? Yeah. From like having too much pressure on my mouth. Somebody was pushing down and You feel someone's hand pressing down on your mouth. Feel somebody pressing down on your mouth. Yes. Can you see their face? Not at first, but it's like it's a weird face on here. Did it look like Chad? The shadow, yes. There's a longer beard on there at the bottom. And it was red. Red? Red. Three shades of red. Like Chad? Yeah. Well, three shades. Again, to protect the identity of the uh, accused, uh, this part has been blocked for that purposes. And now to resume uh, our, our recorded session here. Inside your vagina. No. Could you feel inside your rear end? No. Did he put his dick in your mouth? No. He hit you and then what? He's holding you down. Are you on your face? Are you on your back? No. And he, does he take off your pants? Or do you take off your pants? No, I didn't. Do you remember him taking off your pants? He would have had to lift you up. I was struggling. So, that would have been easy. Feel him pulling off your pants right now. Does he take off your shoes or just your pants? And does he get on top of you? Can you feel him on top of you right now? He's not on me. Does he take off his pants? No. He's too on down now. Does he get on top of you? Can you feel him on top of you? He was sitting on top of me. He obviously I was having trouble breathing. Was he 
his chest on you. No, he was sitting up, looking at me, telling me that I was pretty. And then what did he do? He said he wanted to feel. Did he take his hand and put it on your vagina? Start to suck on your sh on your breasts. Um, he never took my shirt off. He puts his hand down on your area. No, he did on my butt. Is it definitely Chad? Yeah. And then what does he do? He grab after he grabs your ass. Just just la, 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 right la, la. We just were blocking out the name, that's all. start to finger you. Kind of screamed out because he was hurting me. And he started he's like squeezing. Is he fingering you now? He was feeling me. Does he put his finger inside you? Take his pants off. Mm. What does he do next? He's feeling you down there. He's hurting you. Mm. It's a little painful. Yeah. Feels a little good. Mm. He takes his finger. No, he's just hurting me. By squeezing? No, he was just.
So he's fingering you with his finger. Inside you. Things get a little rough. This point. I was trying to kick her out of the As long as you didn't scream, it was okay and he wasn't going to hurt you. going to remember this. Yeah. You started crying. He'd taken your ponytail and pulled on it. Yeah. And being mean. Did he, did he, what did he do next? Did he start to inject himself inside you? No, he never touched me. What did he do next? Grab your boobs again, okay. He said that it felt so nice, and then what? He said that you weren't going to remember this. He said to close your eyes. Everything was dark. You woke up, your shoes are back on your feet, and you were confused. Yeah. And then uh, I was trying to figure out how I ended up. How I ended up here. It was like. Like a flashback. What had happened, and I started running.
Did you grab your purse? didn't have your purse? I'm gonna do it to mine. Then what happened? So, so I started to Hey, uh, so I'm at the hospital now, so don't mind me. I, they want me to put this mask on, and they give me a lot of uh, crap for not having it on. So um, <clears throat> uh, we're here at the hospital um, in uh, with the rape victim, and it turns out that the police, Orlando Police Department, are not following protocol uh, because they did not, they were supposed to, I guess, take her to a rape uh, victim, uh, a hospital that specialized in that, I guess it's like a crisis center for rape victims, uh, to test. They didn't offer to test her. They didn't offer to do any of that stuff. Um, it was actually on my recommendation that she goes to the hospital to have what could possibly be tears in her vaginal area uh, looked at and documented. Um, that was never even a thought on the officer's mind. Uh, I questioned the officer about it. They were like, hey, well, there's an hospital there. Um, so uh, I put in a telephone call and requesting uh, for the officer to call me back, as well as the sergeant, to find out what's going on. Why are they not taking this seriously? This is a rape victim. Should be taken more seriously than most things. So definitely not impressed so far with what I've seen with the Orlando Police Department, and I'm not going to let this go. Hey, so when I tell you I'm a pit bull, I am. Uh, I've contacted the Orlando, Plan Orlando Police Department several times now, asked them to speak to a sergeant or Corporal Price, uh, who's above the original uh, officer, Daniel Verrill. Ver uh, it's a hard name to pronounce. Uh, Verrillino or something like that. Uh, uh, and if this matter is not resolved, I am going to, I already told them I'm going to contact the state police to oversee this investigation because they're certainly not taking it seriously at all. Um, so that's definitely troublesome and a problem and a severe lack of training uh, on the Orlando Police Department. So this needs to be taken care of quickly or we're going to take it up a notch and take it to a whole nother level because I'm not letting this go. I will contact every news outlet, including the Robinson Report, uh, and uh, make sure that uh, Orlando Police Department is held accountable uh, for investigating this properly, which so far they've done a horrible job. Um, so they didn't ask for anything. If I didn't turn in evidence, it, 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 when I tell you horrible and you'll be, uh, we'll be interviewing the, uh, the victim shortly, uh, without using her name and without, uh, using her, um, picture. Um, I may end up using a voice, uh, distorter, um, in order to uh, change your voice, uh, or it may not. But regardless, you're going to hear from the victim's own words uh, how she feels like a victim all over again. She's not being taken seriously. And uh, basically, uh, the Orlando Police Department is making her relive the rape all over again. Even the uh, hospital that she went to on her own, basically on my recommendation, told her that the police did not follow protocol, that they should have uh, had her go to a special uh, rape victims unit and to, you know, have them look at her, that that is the protocol and that they did not follow it. Uh, that's uh, Advent Health <laughs> uh, told us that directly. So again, I'm not letting this go. Um, got my eye on you, Orlando Police Department. Better do your job. All right. I've always had your back. Now it's time to step up and do your damn job. All right, I'm on this now. Hey, so I just got off the phone with Officer Price, and he explained a lot that um, that the original officer was not wrong. He apologized that he didn't explain enough of the procedure that because there's no ejaculation or he didn't penetrate his penis into her vagina, that uh, that they don't do a rape 
test kit for that. And it's, you know, they did contact the uh, uh, special victims unit and that's what they were advised uh, that she doesn't need to go do that. So if it was a murder, it'd be a different story. Um, I get it and I understand. So I want to apologize and I have no problem saying that I'm wrong. Apologize to the uh, officers. Uh, I don't want to slander the officer and I certainly don't want to slander the Orlando Police Department if in fact they were doing the right thing. Uh, and in this case, it sounds like so far so good. So I want to apologize. Is it weird? I'm doing the same video. I'm throwing them under the bus and I'm apologizing. Well, it's sometimes it's real easy for us to throw people under the bus without knowing the facts. And unfortunately, um, the Advent Health Hospital wouldn't know those facts. So the information they gave us, although grateful, and, and I'm not throwing them under the bus, was inaccurate. So it turns out that they are following their procedure and it's basically now going to be a waiting game. So I want to apologize to that officer, Daniel. I want to apologize to the Orlando Police Department. So far, I'm not complaining. Uh, I apologize. And let's see where this case goes. And let's see, you know, where we go from here. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you for, for, for getting back to me. Hey, so uh, <laughs> this is uh, Jerome Robinson, the rooster with the Robinson Report. I purposely have the camera dim low, like the background low, very little lighting, because the person sitting next to me is the victim of who we're talking about. This is the rape victim that's going to talk a lot. She's got a lot to say. We're not going to mention her name. She's talking about stuff that's happened uh, prior. She's going to talk about the actual incident itself. She's going to talk about... Um, how I used hypnosis to get a lot of it out of her without leading her. You heard the recordings yourself, um, some of them anyway. We're going to talk about, um, and we're not going to name the victim, by the way, just so, uh, sorry, we're not going to name the accused either, the alleged raper, uh, rapist, because that's unfair because it's an ongoing, and I don't mean to make light of it to say it's unfair. Um, I'm just saying from a legal standpoint, it's going to be a lot more difficult for the prosecutor to go after, uh, uh, this person when we're airing dirty, I don't want to say dirty laundry, but basically it's a, it, it's an open investigation. Uh, we can't name the perpetrator's name other than say that it's a he and she knows who he is and she's in protective custody, my protective custody. So if you yourself as the rapist are watching this, I'm going to stick my foot right up my, how do I say this right? I butchered that, didn't I? I'm going to stick my boot straight up in your, if you et come near her, okay? And yes, I'm cocked and loaded. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> By the way, for all those, anybody who follows Jesus, I don't think there's one thing I said that wasn't Jesus-like, meaning I'm not threatening him. I am threatening, him. well, that's true. I am threatening him. I'm saying, hey, if you come near her uh, to attack her in any way whatsoever, I'm going to stick my boot up. Right. So I'm not like really being, in my opinion, negative, but feel free to tell me that I am if you guys think I am, because maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so she's going to talk uh, basically about her interaction with the police department and how uh, her interaction with the uh, uh, with uh, the hospital and her feeling depressed now, even worse, because she feels she's reliving victim uh, being the victim uh, with the way the police are handling it. So without further ado, uh, I'll start from wherever you want to start. And, uh, she's been talking a lot to me and I said, Hey, save it. Don't tell me now. She's getting mad at me. Save it for the camera, meaning save it for the audience, save it for you guys, because I don't, it's not that I'm trying to make this big show. It's, and don't get me wrong. I like a big show. It's that I don't want her to say something and then not say it later because she already said it, although it wasn't on camera. So it needs to be on here on the show, right? So here we go. Without further ado, I'm not going to mention her name, but it is a she, and she's going to talk to you. Whether I choose to distort her voice or not, we'll talk about that later. And if you hear her and it's distorted, well, guess what? We chose to go with the distorted voice option. <laughs> if it's not, then it's not. Here she goes. Do you want me to set you up or do you know how to start? Yeah, you want me to set you up? Okay. So <clears throat> let's start with, let's go back. You, uh, Went into a uh, bar. Yes. To get drinks. Uh, yeah. It's... Yeah. Well, you went into bar to go get food, and then you went to go get, uh, and then you had a drink. It was raining. Yes. And then you had uh, another drink. 
Yeah, I used the rain as an excuse to not have to leave because it was pouring down rain and I didn't want the food to get wet. So I wasn't going to just sit there. Like To me, my thought pattern was, well, I don't want to just sit here and just just sit basically so um when the bartender said hey do you want to fill up i was like sure why not um was it a very heavy pour um so based on what i saw it was nothing but vodka okay in the whole entire glass but it was flavored vodkas so it was um tea flavored vodka okay and lemonade flavored vodka okay and it's literally half of the tea and half of the lemonade till the glass was full. Okay. So you're looking at you know, whatever alcohol content I think you said is. you registered at a 4.2 at the hospital, uh, right? They said, yeah, they registered me way above um, uh, the legal limit. All right. So let's go back. You're at the, you're, you're at the uh, bar. When's your first interaction with the rapist? Um, when I had sat down and, and started talking. The, the bartender came up to me and I had asked if they served food um, and sh I remember it because she made a joke about it saying um, they do but their food sucks you might want to go down the street and then she laughed and she's like no our food's actually really really good uh, and the, then all of a sudden this guy at the end of the bar was like oh yeah their loaded tater tots are the best here so I ended up changing my order um, to right from regular tater tots to loaded to try them. So um, because you know people's opinion, I take yeah. it and see what happens. You know. What was your first impression of the gentleman? Um, he really creeped me out. Um, he had like buggy eyes. Like it seemed like he was more than just drunk um, or just drinking. Um, like he was on something. Um, bulgy eyes. He, he just he seemed creepy to me. Like, um, okay. So, uh, was that your only interaction with them at that time at that bar? Yes. Okay. You left the bar. You come back some time later. Correct. And you went to what? Go play pool? What did you go um, do? I, my original um, plan was, you know, I was upset. So, I... Um, was just gonna blow off some steam, play some pool, maybe shoot some darts, and not, you know, not to drink essentially, but to just, you know, aggression, whatever. And so then when I went back in, I didn't even go to the bar. I went to the opposite room where I knew there was two pool tables and dartboards um, to try to see how much it was gonna cost. And then um, that same guy was actually playing pool at the time. I didn't notice until he said something to me. Um, and he what did was, he say? So he was like, oh, um, so you decided to visit us so soon, cutie? Um, something to that aspect. And and I was like, I, I kind of like blew it off and didn't say anything back. And then he he um, was like, oh, do you, do you like to play pool? And I said, I do, but I suck at it. Um, and at the time he had somebody else, another male, that was playing with him and it, it felt like a setup kind of almost because the, the guy the other guy was like oh I'm done playing you're beating me anyway um, and then that guy was like oh look I need somebody to help me finish my game and I um, I just thought it was really creepy and weird like stalkerish and so I was like no I'm good and then I realized it was getting later so that's when I was like trying to rush out to go um, back to the hospital um, and then didn't he say something to the effect of like I want to teach you how to play pool or you can yes, watch me yes I apologize um, so when I told him no about playing pool with him he goes well I can teach you honey uh, you can play with me and I was like no I'm good <laughs> um, and then at that point you know it's when it got to the point where I was like eh, this doesn't you know this is an awkward type of feeling for me and um, things have happened to me in my past before, so I throw up things easier, um, quicker. Uh, I just, I felt really nervous around this guy, like, so I just, I ended up leaving and walking off, and then I realized that I felt like somebody was walking behind me, um, so I kept looking back, because it was already dark, and I, and then I was like, yeah, I'm just being paranoid, um, 
and then um, you know, I was like, well, you know, I want to try to make it back there before visitation's over. So I thought it would be easier to take a shortcut, thinking that it was actually a shortcut back to the hospital, when in reality it wasn't. Um, I ended up between another parking garage and a building, and. Um, Once you got up in the parking garage. I, um, so I think you're skipping a part. No. The, oh. the parking garage here was not the one that I thought it was. Okay. So, but you went up to use the bathroom or something. Right. Yes. Um, I went up, walked up a flight of stairs to go to the bathroom. Um, and then when I came back down. Um, so, but when I got back there to the... Well, hold on. As you're walking down the stairs... Did he grab you at that point? No, it was when I was in the alley. I thought he grabbed your shoulder. He you? did, but that wasn't until after the fact. I had already went pee before that. Correct. And then when I came down, back down, because I had already realized that I couldn't cut across. So I was going to go S back the other way. Still towards the hospital? Yes. Okay. And so that's when he had put his hand on my shoulder and then I quickly turned around because I didn't know who it was. And um, he was trying to make it out like I had forgot something at the bar. And, um, you know, I just felt weird. So I I was, like, trying to go. And then that's when he grabbed me and pushed me down to the ground. And, um, yeah. Um, I know this is tough for you. I just... I just filling up on me and telling me that um, you know, I, I was such a beautiful girl and he hadn't been with a woman in a while. Now there's a part of it where you don't remember because you were said you were tying your shoes you got but you don't remember. Now to those that are watching and, and th those that heard the actual uh, hypnosis session uh, I want to break that down. It, I can tell you what happened without leading anybody on. And the fact that she didn't remember, there was a time lapse where she, when she tied her shoe or went bent down, uh, if you're hit on the back of the head and knocked out, whether you're kind of knocked out or just, you know, bewildered, not necessarily fallen conscious, but that part of your head will actually, and it's very common with most people in accidents, almost every accident victim, and, and, and the police usually know this, that 10 seconds or so, uh, it's not an exact number, but uh, prior to being hit on the back of the head, they will lose that memory, right? So, if I get hit, if I if 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 I'm going to start my count right now, and it's uh, say nine sixteen, right, uh, and seventeen seconds, I get hit in the back of the head right now. Uh, I will forget uh, nine sixteen and seven seconds. Basically, will have gone back. I will have forgotten ten seconds prior to me even being hit. Right, so um, the fact that she doesn't remember uh, certain aspects of it, she doesn't know. You know, at one point she's bending down, the next point she's being just someone on her chest and she's being molested. Uh, very common. There's a lot of things that people don't realize. You could be a victim and not know it simply because the common public, right? What's common knowledge to most people. They don't understand these facts. Um, unless you're an expert in dealing with this type of stuff, you wouldn't know. Most police officers don't know. It's a, a special victims unit or a rape therapist or rape counselor that might know that information. And unfortunately, there's not enough good training out there that can help these victims and explain that they are victims instead of treating them like... Uh, I don't know. It just you know what, what we, you know. There's a lot of police officers out there. Like what what are we gonna do? What evidence have we got? You know. He said. She said. Blah 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 blah. We'll let the detective handle it. A few days later, whenever they decide to call, these things could drag out for how? I mean, go ahead and say some of the stuff that was said to you, if you don't mind. Um. Yeah. So. Um. Basically, once uh, everything happened, and I was at the hospital. Do you want me to go from there, or just straight to the? We met up with the police today. 
Um, you can go into where we met with the police today. I will tell you, let me, let me, you can go into a little bit of detail. Like for example, she ended up going to the hospital without any underwear, without any pants. She shows up at the hospital, has no idea what happened, has no idea where her vehicle is. Um, shows up at the hospital. She gets confronted by a couple police officers. She gets Baker acted because she's out of her mind. Um, they do an alcohol test on her and turns out she's got a 4.2 and they say she's not crazy. She's just drunk or out of it. And they release her into, uh, a Baker Act facility that, uh, psychiatrist within moments of her meeting her says, Hey, don't know why you're here. You're released. You're not, uh, you shouldn't be here. You're not, um, crazy. You're not, uh, a danger to yourself or anybody else. You shouldn't have been Baker acted. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm actually glad she was Baker acted because if she was arrested or went to jail, we could have a very different outcome. Um, she may not, we may not be where we're at today. All right. Um, so with that being said, how crazy is it that, you know, and, and I apologize. I'm just as guilty. The doctors, the police are guilty of here's a woman who is has no pants, no underwear, has no idea how she got to the hospital, no idea what happened the past hour or two, no idea where her vehicle is, and then she just gets Baker acted. Like, hmm, could she have been raped? I, unfortunately, like I said, I'm just as guilty. It certainly didn't cross my mind, but who it should have crossed was the police department. Didn't cross their mind at all. She, and she could have been arrested on top of that. She wasn't acting belligerent or anything like that. It's crazy that she should have been... A rape test kit should have been done on her right then and there. Hey, maybe she's been raped. Anyway, it shouldn't have taken me to figure this out and to bring it to the police to do their job for them. That is very frustrating. So if I seem like I'm frustrated with the Orlando Police Department, you'll have this love-hate relationship, right? I am because you need to do your job and give a damn. Excuse my language. They shouldn't have said D-A-M. You need to give a darn schnookets. With that being said, um, talk about your interaction with the police and how you felt. You felt that they believed you or did not believe you. Talk to me. Uh, so basically the cops showed up and just happened to be the same cop that uh, helped uh, find the vehicle. And uh, so it kind of seemed awkward from the beginning because it seemed as, you know, like, oh God, not again. Um, that's how I felt. And then, you know, I was trying to explain everything to him and they made me talk about all of it all over again. And it just, it, it, it was saddening because right after he talked to me and went to go talk to you, the other guy that was standing behind him made me re-say everything all over again. Like he was trying to trick me or to try to get me to slip up on the exact same thing I just said but different and it was it was it was saddening because and frustrating at the same time because how many times do I have to repeat this over and over and over to how many people it's embarrassing and it's it's it, you know it's something that is not okay and and it just felt like they didn't believe me, especially the second person, because he was standing right behind the guy. He could hear everything I said the first time. So why would you come back right after he walks off to, to ask me the same exact stuff all over again as if I was lying? Now, if I may interject, I understand. I mean, me not knowing much would may do that to see if you are, you know, if your story doesn't add up and, and, and I get that, but I think what a lot of police officers don't really understand that by making you repeat it and, and there's no other way to do it. You have to make the victim repeat it. I get that. Um, so I'm not here throwing them under the bus for that, but for the making them repeat it, they're making them relive it over and over and over again. And she had to repeat it again in the hospital over and over and over again. And it's something that I think they should have been a lot more sympathetic, a lot more caring, instead of making her feel like she's lying. Now, I'm not saying that that was going through their head. I'm telling you that's how I felt that they thought. 
I think that they didn't believe her, but that is not, that's here nor there. That's my perception. That may not be the truth, but what matters is the victim's perception. And if the victim is being, is being raped again by the Orlando police department because of the way she feels they're treating her, remember she got raped. She's making to be reliving it again, which needs to happen then making her relive it again and then making her write a, a uh, what is it called? A, uh, a uh, report a statement. I, statement. I get that. It needs to happen. What I am questioning is why couldn't they be more supportive, more caring, or had a specialist come out that handles these type of things that would have been more supportive and caring? What really messed me up, if I can interject, Please, I, I want you that... to like literally after the statements were written out and I gave them to them and I had went to ask them I, they were like ready to leave and everything and I jumped out and was trying to ask them you know because it, nothing it was like short and sweet okay thanks here's your paperwork whatever this is what you need I'll wait to hear from the detective might be a few days yeah you know they're off. and so then I go to the guys uh go up to the car and instead of him getting back out he rolls down his window like you know coming to bother me again type thing and and I asked him about the detective and he's like listen this is not something that's gonna have that's gonna be taken care of overnight so if that's what you expect then he um you might as well not expect that because this is gonna be a long process and it's gonna take time and and um you know it's it's not it was just like you know like basically throw it under the rug if something happens great if not who cares they'll get back to you when they get back to you blah 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 and then i'm like okay thank you and being courteous and then what really messed me up and brought my depression down to was better luck to you now was his statement hope you have a better day so it just really messed me up because it was like hope you have a better day like what the fuck sorry about my language but like that's what you say to somebody that just went through something that you made me relive over and over instead of oh my gosh I'm so sorry I mean whatever there was no compassion it seemed or no care it was just, yep, yeah, okay, whatever. We got everything we need. We're out. We've done our job. Whenever they decide to do theirs, it's on them. Who cares? So, as a victim, does it make you want to continue on with this investigation? No. Why? Because I feel like everybody's already judging me from the get-go. And that it's just, they don't care. Nobody cares. So... <clears throat> How can we make things different with our police department to get them to show the victim that they care so they want to come forward and people can, you know, there's a lot of victims out there that don't want to come forward because they don't want to go through with what you're going through and they don't want to have to relive it. It's bad enough that it happened to have to live with it for the rest of your life as a memory is bad but then they have to relive it and tell the story over and over and over again. People think these victims are like happy about doing it. Like, like, hey, let's go throw somebody in jail because uh, because they had sex with me or I want to accuse them for because I'm bored. No, you got raped and it's hard enough to come clean about it. It's hard enough to come clean with your spouse, your boyfriend, your husband, your whomever, your kids, let alone the police or anybody else. And you're going to be labeled. People are going to doubt you. It's it's a bad scene. I get it. But what I want the victims to understand is that I'm on your side. And I'm on your side, ma'am. And I'm going to help you make sure that the Orlando Police Department do their job. If not, I will get the state police involved. Because your rights, your voice, justice will be served. Is there anything else you want to say uh, to the people or to the victims out there? I just, it's... Or to the police department? It's just saddening how it's just... 
He really messed me up. Even at the hospital, it was, hey, get undressed and put this on. And that was for nothing, too. Like, the doctor comes in. Like, the, the first nurse that came in acted as if it was a joke. I mean, just didn't have any care or anything. It was, hey, let me ask you all these questions. And then, you know, double question you as if, uh, you know, why did you wait to tell us? And why didn't you come in that night? And, and it's like, I did. <laughs> um, you guys thought I was crazy. So you, they corrected me instead of questioning these kind of questions then. Um, and it's just, and then the doctor comes in and it was just nonchalantly like, felt like, well, guess what? We're going to brush you off. We don't care. See you. Bye. This is not our job to do. And if you're hurting, oh well. Yeah. They said the police should have. Like they sent blamed you it on the different... cops. And then it was, you know, what do you want me to do for you? <clears throat> uh, I don't know. Maybe give a shit. <laughs> um, and then they walked out, you know, and it's like, I'm sitting there and sitting there and sitting there for nothing, for nothing. And it just. Big fat waste of time. Big fat waste of time, you know, and just, it, it bothers me so much because how many people I had to tell the freaking person that did triage, the person at the front desk, the person that took me to the back to another nurse that sat down in the room to the doctor, five people literally in less than an hour had to retell the same story over on top of the two cops I had to tell the story to and a written statement so it, it was just they're like well why did the cops tell you to come here no the cops didn't tell me to come here they didn't tell me anything I said of wait be patient when it gets dealt with it gets dealt with people are on vacation who gives a shit who cares <laughs> it's horrible you know, but, what if I decided to, you know, do something, uh, you know, w what if this really messed me up so bad that something crazy, I go off the wall and just do something crazy. Like then what, is that what it takes for people to give a shit? And in reality, I feel like even then it's like, oh, well, pff, whatever. Well, for all of you at the Orlando Police Department that are watching this, I hope you're taking great notes and I hope you make great change in your policies, your procedures, and your training. Stop laughing at this video, stop treating it like a joke, and get your act together, or I will do it for you. Yes, I will. I promise. Get it together. That's my voice. It's strong. For all you victims out there, I'm here for you. Call me text me before you text me i'm here for you and i will fight for you when they won't thank you anything else no all right